Right, just a few important words I wanted to say before we get started here. On this video, as we can see, as you can see, I've got a long list of topics here, and I'll be wasting a lot of time if I talk about it all. So you may want to pause this video and read most of this on the board here. You could focus it there. So you may want to read that. And also, I don't go through it in terrible detail, so it would be, you would benefit a lot if you had some sort of calculus textbook to help you as well. Okay, let's get started then. Right. As you can see here, this is the domain and range, and you can read all of this. If you want all the information there, you may want to pause it. Right. Now I want to show you how to calculate a function. So if we want to calculate f of 2 for this function, we just put 2 for every way where we're seeing x. Okay, so f of 2 then would be which is equal to very easy arithmetic, so that's all you do for that. So that's that one done. I can put a tick next to that. Okay. Now, for the domain and range, we want to find the domain of these functions. And that's the allowed, clear set states here, the allowed values of x. Now, if you notice, if this square root is less than zero, then we'll get a complex number, so it won't be in the domain. So, we want this to be greater than zero or equal to zero. We do not want it to be less than zero. So, for that reason, x has to be greater than or equal to minus five. Because you see, if it was lower than that, then this would come out to be negative, which would be a complex number. And we can't graph complex numbers, so that's not allowed. Next one here. Now we can't divide by zero because that's clearly said undefined. It approaches infinity, but clearly it can't be done. So we do not want this to be equal to zero. So what we're going to do is we're going to solve this equation equal to zero. I'm not going to waste much time on it. You should know how to do it. It's not hard. So we'll get 3x is equal to 1 by rearranging. Moving the 1 over, then divide both sides by 3, I get x is my third. That's not allowed. x can have any value except a third. Because if we had a third, that would become 0, okay? So we go, we've got the mean and range done. Now, just let us rub some of this off, you may want to pause it again, as I said. Okay, now I want to talk about the vertical line test. Now the vertical line test Basically says if we take a line from any point here on the x-axis, it should not draw a vertical line up at any point. It should not cross the curve more than once. If it crosses more than once, then it's not a function. Now look, notice if I put a line here, that crosses the curve three times. So that's not a function. So we can use the vertical line test to see if it's a function or not. Okay, so that's what the vertical line test is. Next topic. Piecewise defined functions. It's basically a good example of one is the absolute value.
Now the absolute value should be one that you're familiar with. Its graph looks a bit like... I'll sketch it for you. It looks V shape. Y equals absolute value of X. Okay. And another example of one is we've had some function that was x say something like x squared plus 3 for all x squared and i equal to 0 and it was x minus 1 for x and 0 okay so a piecewise defined function is a function where the um formulas different for different inputs of x for the function. Okay, that's what that is. Right. Next topic, odd and even functions. I had them on earlier on the board. And you should have seen what they are. There should be some examples in your book if you start off with f of negative x if you get f of x it's even if you start off with f of negative x you get that and it's odd the algebra is pretty easy you should be pretty familiar with how to do that sort of stuff so I'm not going to really go through it you should just need to be told it there's some examples in the book should be anyway. Most of all, increasing and decreasing functions. That's a big graph here. Now look on this bit here, it's increasing because the curve It's increasing if the output is going up Okay, on this bit the output is clearly going up, so that's increasing So if we call this x1, x2, x3, x4, x5 We can say, say here that x2 is bigger than x1 so that means it's increasing and this one here we we'll say that x3 is less than x2 so therefore it's decreasing okay That's my full list of topics covered and if you've got any questions you can put them on the video and if you really want to see an example about how you can work out if odd and even from if a function's odd and even also state that in your comment on the video and I'll make one for you one day so you can check out that one as well okay